Gemini 6, Rendezvous in Space, brought to you in color by the Continental Insurance Company. Now from the CBS News Space Center, here is Walter Cronkite. Here we are for the coverage of America's 10th manned space flight and undoubtedly the most difficult and significant uh, space flight by any nation since Russia's Yuri Gagarin orbited the Earth in 1961. For today, the United States is to attempt to rendezvous and docking, the meeting of two spacecrafts out in space, a vital maneuver if we are to go to the moon, a vital uh, test of the, the program for all future space flights. Charles uh, Von Fremd is at the Cape with an up-to-the-minute report as we wait for the first launching there scheduled in the next few moments. Charles? Yeah, Walt, uh, everything looks real good down here right now. There hasn't been a slightest delay in the uh, countdown on the Atlas and Gina rocket. Uh, as of now, the countdown is going clickety-clack. We should be launching on the hour. The Atlas, one of the oldest and also one of the most reliable space booster rockets, is batting 28 for 30 in its most recent launches. And over on pad 19, 6,000 feet away, uh, Wally Schirra and uh, Stafford will depart there on a Titan II booster, which has a record of 22 successes out of 23 launches from the Cape. Uh, so the weather is cooperating. Everything looks go, but of course you never know, Walt. That's Charles. Filling you in now on the details of this day, in just uh, three minutes and 22 seconds from now, that Atlas booster with its 360,000 pounds of thrust, it stands there some 66 feet high, on top of it a 26 feet of the Agena target vehicle. It's 26 feet long, 5 feet in uh, diameter, and that vehicle will go up into orbit very shortly. In three minutes from now, the countdown is a T minus 258. It goes up to 185 miles, it is hoped, makes one circuit of the Earth, and then as it comes over Cape Kennedy on its first trip around, the Gemini will be launched atop its Titan rocket. Up in the white room, they are just about to seal the astronauts Wally Schirra and Tom Stafford uh, into their capsule. The doors are supposed to be latched there just about the time that the uh, Gina is being launched from that pad a little over a mile to the south of them. Perhaps they will be able to uh, see it uh, out the windows of the white room, although it seems doubtful. They'll certainly be able to hear it because actually 6,000 feet, which is the distance between those two pads, isn't very great. It's 1,500 feet, as a matter of fact, inside the normal safety requirements that they normally clear. Uh, an area that is cleared for all space launches runs at least 7,500 feet for the Atlas. They're well inside that area. That is one of the first of the many uh, dangers and problems of uh, this launch today. The astronauts are, of course, Navy Captain Walter Marty, called Wally Schirra, Jr., he was born in Hackensack, New Jersey, and he's the oldest of all of our active astronauts. He's 42 years old, and he's going up with a man who has not been up before. While he has, of course, he made a six-orbit uh, trip in the Mercury program, which was called a textbook flight, a perfect flight, and he's hoping for a second perfect one today. Tom Stafford is his co-pilot today, an Air Force major, and you see him in his... Uh, seat there. That actually is Wally on that side, and on the other side is Tom Stafford. That's a television monitor that's located uh, just over their heads in the white room up at the 100-foot level of uh, the uh, work erector that will be lowered before the launch, of course, of the Titan. Now the count has reached just one minute before the launch of the Atlas, and here is Jim King at uh, Mercury Control. T minus 50 seconds. Stay with me, is that right? T minus 40 seconds. At this point in the blockhouse at launch, con at launch complex 14, the Atlas test conductor is just looking at a series of lights on his console. These ready lights will turn green. When all of them are green, we will be ready to go. T minus 25 seconds and counting. There will be a momentary hold at T minus 19 when we press the ignition switch. T minus 17 seconds. T minus 15. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 
Yeah. Holding momentarily at four. We have ignition. And a lift off right on the button. Right on the arrow. There again goes that fiery plume of the Atlas. We haven't seen uh, such a spectacular takeoff in the manned space program since Atlas boosted the Mercury astronauts aloft. Now Atlas, the workhorse of the missile fleet, putting that Agena up into orbit. It looks like a perfect flight. So far, the takeoff has been perfect. This has to be a perfect one. That Agena has to reach an altitude of 185 miles on a perfect circular orbit. It can be corrected by its onboard guidance machinery a slight amount, but basically it's got to go into a good orbit if this rendezvous is to be achieved today. We'll know that about 10 minutes from now when this uh, rocket is right going into orbit there over Bermuda. Here is our super long-range camera. Just couldn't be finer. That's Paul Haney at Mission One Control. Minute and eight seconds into the flight. We have an estimate now, a precise estimate on the liftoff time as four seconds after the hour. A beautiful shot with our BU Boston University camera. One minute, camera. 35 seconds, and we should be coming up on booster engine cutoff. That rocket is now some 40 miles high and about the same rate downrange from the Cape. It's been two minutes since takeoff, and we should get booster cutoff now in just a moment. There's two engines of the Atlas, and there it went. There it is. It looked like to us at about 2 minutes and 12 or 13 seconds. Now the Atlas is on its Atlas single sustainer engine. engine. The word here. At this point it has escaped the most of the Earth's atmosphere and a smaller engine can carry it on now with the speed it has been propelled from the uh, Earth with those two big engines on into orbit. Our sustainer engine, which is pushing the uh, atlas Agena combination at this point, is programmed to be shut down at 277 seconds into the flight. We're three minutes in right now, or 185 seconds. The small directional vernier engines operate for another 20 seconds, then they shut down. We then have a coast period of some 42 seconds. And we'll have a small attitude control burn to assure the position of the Agena. By this time, we will have jettison the sustainer and at 362 seconds we begin a uh, about 150 second uh, Gina burn the flight controller here the Agena controller here in uh, Houston has just told Canary she's right on the old nominal line four minutes into the flight of the Atlas Agena Every one of these stages must go perfectly if this rendezvous is to be achieved. Each of these things Paul Haney was explaining to us, that Agena burn means that the uh, capsule, the target vehicle itself, will use its onboard That's propulsion equipment. Seconds. Everything looking dandy. And it will be pushed uh, somewhat uh, off of the normal uh, launch trajectory by some uh, five degrees. Uh, to aid in the in bringing it into the same trajectory that the Gemini will be launched in uh, some hour and a half from now. Standing by for Seco. Seco, call it four minutes, 44 seconds. 